This is video 58 in our series, uh, Electrical Circuit Analysis. Uh, the playlist for uh, all of our videos is at the website digital-university.org. Um, in this video, we want to consider again just a very simple circuit and kind of um, pick up where we left off in uh, the last video, uh, video 57. Let's say for this circuit here that we have a full circuit now. And then let's say our battery is 12 volts. The current that is going through this resistor and subsequently this coil is equal to 12 divided by the value of this resistor. We had established that in the in the uh, previous video. So that's 6 amps of current going through the coil. Um, in this resistor. Now, as we had discussed, well, what we want to do is this. We want to consider now if we open the switch like this, what will be the voltage drop across these terminals? That's eventually what we want to answer. Um, remember in the last video, if we did not have a discharge resistor, so if the circuit was like this, initially it's connected, then we open the switch. We discussed how there can be a tremendous voltage drop developed across here that could drive the 6 amps right across this air gap. And the reason for that is, initially it's a complete circuit, then when we open it, the 6 amps of current that was in there just after we open the switch, it collapses very quickly. In fact, it can collapse so fast that the induced voltage across the coil can reach several million volts because our current is collapsing so fast. Therefore, DIDT has such a high value that when you multiply it by the, by the inductance, in this case, four Henry's, it can generate a huge voltage here that can drive the 6 amps right across this gap and create a spark. And as we discussed in the last video, that essentially is um, the principle of the automotive ignition system. And that's why here we have a discharge resistor. And now we're asking ourselves, OK, we have the discharge resistor. What will be then the voltage drop across these terminals when we open up the switch? That's the question that we eventually are going to answer. But let's just go back to the beginning. Say initially it's like this. And we close the switch. When we do that, immediately afterwards, the amount of current that's going through the coil is not 6 amps. Um, in videos 54 and 55, we had derived the equations that govern the current that goes through the coil immediately after this switch was closed to make this a complete circuit, and also the voltage across the coil. This was the equation for the current, and this was the equation for the voltage drop, the induced voltage across the coil. And we look at this, we said I max. I max in this case is just, again, 12 divided by 6. So this would be 6 amps here. At time t equals 0, we have e to the 0, which is 1. So the 0 amount of current. And then as time goes by, we're subtracting from 1 a smaller and smaller number. This is a negative exponent. So eventually the current rises to the steady state value of 6 amps. And then for the voltage drop across the coil, initially, when we just close this switch, and initially, there's barely a trickle of current going through the circuit. So the voltage drop across here and here are negligible. So at that instant then, just after we close that switch, there's a voltage drop across here of this polarity plus minus. It's at such a polarity to oppose 
the flow of the current into the coil and initially right after we close that switch it has a value of 12 ohm of 12 volts and again we discussed that more in videos 54 and 55 and what happens is that induced voltage across the coil it falls off to zero by this equation this would be 12 volts here in our case and just falls off to zero now the reason for that is the voltage across the inductor is L di dt well while L is rising then this curve has a slope to it and that's the di dt then when this just gets to be flat di dt is zero so the voltage then becomes zero so that is what happens just after we complete the circuit then eventually there is no more voltage drop here and then this is four Henry's but there is now six amps of current flowing through here and now we want to ask the question alright so there's six amps of current flowing through this now we're going to open up the switch Now, when we do that, immediately after that, so at time t equal zero plus, the amount of current that's in the coil is still six amps. Remember that we had derived, uh, I think it was in video number 56, the equation for the decay current and that was I equals E over R1 times E to the minus R over L times T and E over R1 in this case that's 6 and then right after the switch is thrown this essentially is still 0 so E to the 0 is 1 so I is 6 so immediately after we open that switch up, there's still six amps of current here. Then of course, that's going to rapidly um, fall off to zero. And then when it does that, that means the magnetic field is going to collapse. And there's going to be a voltage induced across here. But initially, there's six amps of current. So there's six amps of current. And then when the, when the current does start to collapse, then that collapsing current induces a counter voltage of the opposite polarity than when we had current flowing into here and again we discussed that more in, in more detail in the previous videos but here then there is just after we open the switch at that time then t equals zero plus there's six amps of current going through here and it rapidly falls off to zero as we had discussed in the previous video but that means then that there's going to be a voltage drop across this resistor of 72 volts plus minus which means then that up here that's at a voltage then of minus 72 volts just the voltage drop across the resistor. Well over here on this side of the terminal this is at a voltage of plus 12 volts because the battery is here. So this side is plus 12 volts. So over here that's at minus 72 volts over here on this side it's plus 12 volts so the entire voltage drop across here then is plus 84 volts. That's a whole lot different than several million volts which is what it would be if we didn't have the uh, uh, the discharge resistor in there okay um, that really is all I wanted to say in this video let's um, let's just take a moment and kind of put all the graphs together here here that um, let's just say the same circuit we have the 
Now let's do it like this. We have the battery. And then we have resistor, coil, and then we have another resistor. This is 12, this is 2, this is 4, this is 12 volts. For Henry's. And then, as we just demonstrated, when we close the switch to make this a complete circuit, then the, let's just do it, say, for the voltage now across the coil. Remember, when we, just as soon as we close that switch, initially the voltage across the coil plus minus 12 volts, then it decays to zero. Now, what happens then, let's say that, draw this a little bit neater. Okay, so here, this is time. This is voltage. This will be 12 volts. OK, now we open the switch. So now the switch is open. When we open the switch, at that fraction, then immediately afterwards, so at time 0 plus, what is the voltage across the coil? And the answer is it's minus 84 volts. And we can show you why, because first of all, we had determined this equation in, number, in uh, video number 57. This is the voltage across the coil for this type of circuit. And immediately when we open the switch, we said T at time T equals 0 plus. So this is 0. E to the 0 is 1. So as soon as we open the switch, the voltage drop across the coil is minus E times 1 plus R2 over R1. So we have minus E is 12 times 1 plus and then we have 12 divided by 2 is 6. So 12 plus 1, or 6 plus 1 is 7 times 12 is minus 84 volts. And again, it has a minus sign because when we had the growth current coming through here, it was plus minus, when we open the switch, the voltage reverses in polarity. So here then on our graph, this is not going to be drawn to scale now, but when we open the switch, the voltage is going to be minus 84 volts. Let's just say here is where we open the switch. So the voltage is minus 84 volts, and then it's going to decay to zero, like this. So again, when we have our circuit, when we make a complete circuit like this, then there's a voltage across the coil of 12 volts and it decays to zero. Then when we open the switch, the voltage across the coil is now 84 volts of the opposite polarity, then it's just going to decay to zero. Now, what about the current that goes through the coil? Let's erase this and make some room for that. Clean 
this up a little bit. Let's just redraw it. It's the same circuit as this. 12 volts. This is 12 ohms, 2 ohms, 4 Henrys, a 12 volt battery, and now we're going to complete the circuit. And as we explained in the beginning part of the video, the current in the coil will rise up to a value of 6 amps, like this. It stays like that. And then when we open the switch, initially the current is 6 amps, but then it decays to zero like this. And it decays to zero according to this equation. It was E over R1, E to the minus R for L times T, where E over R1 in this case was 6 amps. And then the R that we would have here would be, the decay current goes like this, so the R here would be 12 plus 2 is 14. Here we have 4 Henry's, so it would be 14 over 4, or 7 over 2 times T. But as T gets larger, this term will get smaller and smaller, so it starts at 6 amps, and this falls off to zero. This is the equation for the decay current in our circuit here. Uh, again, it's the total resistance is 14. This is 4. 14 over 4 is 7 over 2. As time goes on, this term gets smaller and smaller with that negative exponent, so the decay current just goes out like this. And then again, for the, uh, uh, the the growth current, we had derived that equation in 54 and 55. This would be 6. This is this part of the curve now. That would be 6 times 1 minus E, and we said over RL over T. Now in this case, the value for R is 2 ohms. It's this resistor right here. So it's going to be R over L. That's going to be 2 over 4, or 1 half. So we have 0.5 times T. So when t is 0, e to the 0 is 1. 1 minus 1 is 0. We have 0 amps. Then this is a minus exponent. And as time goes on, this number gets smaller and smaller. So eventually we're subtracting 0 from 1. So then it rises to the value of 6 amps. Then for the decay current, it decays to 0 according to this equation. And again, we had derived the roots of this equation, or the more generic expression for it, in the previous video. Okay, that's all I want to say here. Hope it wasn't too confusing, but even for these really simple circuits, when you think about everything that's going on, um, there's quite a bit to, um, um, to try to think through. So we'll have a few more videos where we'll consider these types of circuits here and see if we can get some more practice with them.